In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to do the ripple stitch. And the ripple stitch is actually really fantastic. In actual fact, you can actually slip your hook in behind the ripples. So it's really fantastic in that way. So it's one, two, one, two, one, two. So it's in sets of two. Now this is an example. I know I'm going to get email on it. What kind of string was this? This is the James C. Brett Marble Chunky line. This stuff is not cheap but it is fantastic. It takes a long time to transition between colors, giving it a really huge effect. When you compare this Bernat Soft Chunky, you can see that the colors are changing so frequently that it's pretty obvious. So this one has a really nice slow transition and knits and crochets like a dream. I love, love, love this stuff. So let's get started on doing it. Before I forget, stuff. I should tell you that there is a problem with this stitch here. And the problem is, is that the corners like to bend up and into the middle. It's pinned down right now so it's holding it flat. So and the reason why that's happening is that when you look at the ripple stitch you can stick your your hook in behind each one of the ripples because it's giving like a sandbar and a beach kind of effect but the ripples are only on the one side so this is the the bad side of the project. So because the ripples are on the inside and pulling up on the posts on this side it tends to want to make the material roll up and not only roll up here but there. So I would plan if you're doing an afghan or any kind of project that you put on a border that's not the ripple stitch in order to hold this project so let's down. start off with our slip stitch and hello it's Michael from Mikey's Mail and together with my friends at All Free Crochet and I we'd like to introduce you to the ripple stitch in today's tutorial I'm using a four ply Bernat worsted yarn and a size G hook so we're just gonna pull our slip knot on there not too tight but just nice and snug and we're just gonna keep it in sets of two so this is already one two one, two, one, two, one, two, oops, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, and two. And so I'll stop because I'm going to lose count. So you just keep it in sets of two, and at the very end of your row, no matter how long you've done, just please add one. So there we go. So that is your first starting line. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to do our double crochet. We're going to do a double crochet all the way back across this line. So holding your index finger and your thumb onto the stitch just right below the loop, what I want you to do is count three. So chain up three. So one, two, and three. So now using where your finger was holding, that is identifying where that stitch is for your very first stitch. So just wrapping the material around, going in, to the stitch on the line, pulling it through, pull through two and two. And let's review that one more time. So wrapping the material, going to the next stitch on the line, pulling it through, pull it through two and two. So just continue to do that throughout this line and we'll meet you back up at the end and we'll carry on with our next part. So time has fast forwarded and now we're at the end of the line. So all we need just need to do now is just turn your material. So turn it around. So what we're going to do is just chain up one, just chain one, and we're going to single crochet ourselves all the way back across this line. We need to do these two first steps in order to, before we can even start the ripple, because the actual next line that we are doing is actually directly behind the first uh, ripple here, because the ripple is from a line above it coming down. So what we want to do now is that we've just chained up one, and we just want to make sure that we get into the very first stitch that is right there. So we chained up one and it's right underneath it. So just through and through. So just going into the next one, through, through. So you're not grabbing the material. So just go single crochet all the way across this line and we'll meet back up at the end. So I'm coming into the end and how do you know when you're actually finished the end of a line? A lot of people tend to miss it. So this was the chain when we chained up to come back across for the double crochet and this is the, the last post. So what we want to do is we want to go into the one there but do not forget to make sure you go into the chain of this piece here the chain is so important do not go into the gap i always say that in every tutorial going into the gap will pull this to open up like so pulling apart your work so just going into the chain right on the side for your single crochet and therefore see you've just finished a line and that will just smoothen back out so what we need to do now is turn our material and then we got to look at the, the pattern and I got to show you a few. When more. we're looking at the ripple stitch, we actually have to pay attention to something really so simple it's not even funny. So you just have a space, ripple, space, ripple, space, ripple, and we're going all the way down. But you'll notice, see there's a gap here of just empty space 
and then it's the ripple, and you have the ripple and then empty space. If you look above it, the ripples for the next line are right directly beside it on the outside. Just like so. And then on the next one, they're back in again, leaving this gap. So in actual fact, what we need to pay attention to here when we're starting now is that your ripples will come out like this and then extend out, in, out, in, out, in, all the way throughout your project. So when we go to start our first line, you're gonna think that you're missing it and leaving a gap, but in actual fact, you're creating the pattern for it to be begin. So to start, what we're gonna do is double crochet and, and we're gonna do our first chain. So we're gonna do three. We always double crochet three, or our chain three when we double crochet. So chaining up three, and now we wanna put one double crochet into the very next stitch on the line. And so this is creating that gap that I was just explaining earlier. So just double crochet. So now we're ready to do a ripple. So what I want you to pay attention to, see these posts here, one and two here? What we need to do is we look at this one, well this post matches that post and that post matches this one. So obviously the third one in on this one is where we're gonna start doing our ripple. So in order to do a ripple, it's triple crochet. So wrap and wrap. And what we wanna do is you can just use your index finger to push out that stitch or just jam in your hook in behind it and we're just, it's the post. So you're just gonna grab the material, pulling it through, pull through two, two, and two. This is the same thing as uh, the front post uh, double crochet. So, but we're actually triple crocheting in this aspect. So now that you've gone over, so you've got one, two, and you've just grabbed down this one, you're gonna actually leave a jump or a gap in behind on the chain, because you need to do that because that uh, ripple substituted for doing that if you were to do a straight a double crochet along the line. So we want to uh, just double crochet ourselves jumping one over. Just like so. So now the next one is a ripple effect. So every other one is a ripple, every other one is a double crochet. So this here is where we just rippled onto this post. So the next one we want to leave empty, so we want to go to the next one over. So wrap and wrap and going in, pulling it through. And so you have three on your, or four on your hook, pull through two, two, and two. And just like before, you're looking at the line in behind and you'll get used to this really quick is that you're just gonna leave one a gap and then just double crochet over to the second one over because that ripple is compensating for one. And you can really see that it's filling it in. So wrap and wrap going in. So do this all the way across the line. We'll meet back up like we always do on our projects and uh, we'll just uh, do a recap and then we'll go up to our next line. So this next one is a double crochet in and so we're coming up to the end and it looks like we have two posts left here. And remember how we uh, chained up one here and then we just did a double crochet? Well this leaving of the two posts would be the same thing. So we just want to double crochet ourselves into the final two of this particular line. And because you are doing the one, two uh, uh, set like I showed you, it shouldn't uh, be difficult in order to find that. So um, what we want to do now is just start to chain up. Now if you want to look in behind this, you can really tell where you've jumped over that chain and where you have not. Like that is where you grabbed onto the chain and then if you take out your hook, you can actually slip your, your stitch down. Do you see that? There's a gap and that's where you were reaching down for your ripple. So you can see on the behind the scenes that it's you're actually jumping over every other So what we want to do now is just turn our material and this is always going to be the same no matter what line you do. We're just going to chain up one and we're just going to go into the very first stitch that you can see, very first. In. And what we want to do is single crochet ourselves all the way across this line. Now if you were to change color on this particular project, an actual, instead of just using the marble yarn that you see in the background, you will always change your color in this line here. So before you started your single crochet, you would have changed your color at this point. Because the single crochet is what is lying in behind the actual ripples on the project. So um, this is exactly where you want to do it. Um, I've tried changing colors on the using the ripples itself, but because the background um, isn't blending very well, it doesn't look the smartest uh, when you do that. So it's better to have the color transition here in the single crochet than it is to wait for the ripple. So single crochet yourselves all the way across your project. And uh, well, it looks like I'm already at the end while I was explaining that to you. So what we want to do is now just look at it, turn it, 
and now you have your ripples and you have your single crochet and now we're going to double crochet and triple crochet our so now you're looking at this project and now you have the ripples that have started and you both have a gap and you'll notice now that you have two posts on this side of this ripple and then on this side here's the ripple and then you have two posts on this side so that's actually perfect so what we're going to do now is that we're going to chain our do our rippling but we're actually going to ripple now onto the double crochet uh, post that you found so this is the triple and so basically what you're going to be doing is that you're going to be chaining up so let's begin so you're going to chain up three so one two and three so that counts as a double crochet and so now you're going to reach down and grab this post now this post is the double crochet and then you had your layer of single crochet so we're going to wrap and wrap and triple crochet ourselves into that first post And now when you look back at it, you're going to be now skipping one like you did before, okay? And then just double crocheting yourself into the line. So it's just exactly how you did it before. And now basically what you're doing is you're putting the ripples in between the actual stitches of where you were doing it last time. So wrap and wrap. So it's very easy to tell you rippled here. So this is obviously the next one is the one sitting further back in your material. So then you look at the line, skip one, and just double crochet ourselves. And again, that actually becomes really easy to look at. And now you can already start seeing the material starting to bend up. So um, really do carefully think about um, putting a pattern or a border around your, um, your crochet project in order to keep the edges from folding up on you. Um, I found that with the scarf that I've done as well. Um, I didn't realize that this pattern would do that. So it's kind of disappointing when you do a scarf and um, you see it's rolling up like a scroll. So continue along that and we'll get back started on the next line. And basically we're just now repeating everything that you've already so done. So now you're coming up to the end of this project so you can see where you've left your two gap like I talked about already over here. And so basically when you're coming back across this line, you wanna make sure that you go to the second last post before the end of your project so that your ripple is after this bottom one here. So you see. So I guess one line you're going to leave a, a nice little gap in between and then this line that you would will repeat eventually again um, you'll be moving the ripple more closer to the edge so it's like the ripples are working in in and out so all you have to do now is just turn your project and chain up one and just single crochet yourselves back across this line so you, on this project really you got a really easy line of single crochet and then the other lines a little more labor intensive but overall I think this project's actually pretty quick um, because there is a rippling effect you'll find that this material is actually really thick and um, it creates a probably a nice warm blanket we've had several viewers that do this kind of stitch before and create really magical pieces of work um, American flags they've done don't ask me for the pattern I don't know where it is and I've never done it so but there's been a really truly amazing work um, using the ripple stitch. Okay, so we just finished the single crochet, so we're just going to turn it again. So this is, so you see the ripple, the ripple is coming out, and now this is the one again where we chain up three, one, two, and three, and we just double crochet ourselves into the next line. So do you see the difference of what you did before? Last time you started your ripple right away here, but in this case you want to leave the gap like you did over here, so you just want to continue that. So just wrap and wrap, and now you're going to ripple in between the other two ripples that are below on the line below. So this is what's creating the effect. So basically you're now starting to see a repeat of the pattern. And uh, this is actually a really brilliant pattern. I really do like this. And um, good luck and enjoy this another free tutorial from All Free Crochet and Mikey's Mail.